So welcome back, everyone. It is always wonderful to be with you. For those of you in Wisconsin, it's a pretty ugly day in the middle of a series of some ugly days. So I pray you're finding some other rays of sunshine to bring some brightness into that into your life. But before I start, as I have the past few days, I want to remind you all to please complete the survey that's noted in the comments connected to this video. It's, it's important that I get your input as I continue to try to discern the de devotional offering and what this will look like as we slowly return to normal in the months ahead. But remember, member or not, local or from afar, I want to hear from you. But turning our attention to the reflections of today, we spent our time yesterday in the early verses of the seventh chapter of the gospel according to Luke, looking at the healing of the centurion's servant. Today, we're going to stay actually in that same chapter, but move to the end of the chapter where we encounter the story of the sinful woman bathing Jesus's feet. As you may recall, Luke had Jesus in Capernaum in, the nor in northern Galilee at the northwest edge of the Sea of Galilee for that interaction with the centurion of which we read yesterday. But Luke then tells us that Jesus traveled some 20 miles or miles or so south to Nain in southern Galilee, and that's where this story unfolds. This starts with the 36th verse of the seventh chapter. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and Jesus went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And a woman in the city who was a sinner, having learned that Jesus was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with ointment. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw it, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known what kind of woman this was who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. He said a certain creditor had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debts for both of them. Now, which of these will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, you have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered into your house. You gave no, me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she's not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. And then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this that even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. You know, in these kinds of messages. And when I'm preaching on Sundays, I I often try to avoid starting with the conclusion. I, I prefer to work our way together towards the point. Today, however, I want to start at the end. Yesterday, in that 
conversation regarding the healing of the Roman centurion's servant, we were reminded that our pains, our hurts, our struggles, they matter to God, that our needs are worthy of God's care and love. Today, we encounter the story of this sinful woman, and we are funda fundamentally reminded that so are you. Now, here's the subtle kicker that I want to highlight as I say that. I have no idea who you are. That was the thing that just leapt out to me as I read the story and began considering this message of a reminder that you are worthy of God's love. I'm staring at a computer screen as I say that. I have no clue who is on the other side. Yes, there are some who comment regularly uh, who I know are here daily or at least most days. There are some I know check in now and then, but I don't know everyone who's viewing these videos. I don't know what faces are looking at mine on this screen. I don't know who you are, and yet... I am able to look into this screen without a modicum of hesitation and tell you that you are worthy of God's love. This story is one of so many that point us in that direction. We have this tale of this woman with an unidentified sin who somehow makes her way into the home of this Jewish leader who's hosting Jesus for dinner. Now, we can start talking about all of the cultural norms and how those inform the actions she's taking and the dialogue that Jesus shares with Simon. But the part I want to point to is the fundamental reaction that people have to this woman. The Pharisees are aghast at her presence and actions. We don't hear specifics of others in the room, but based on what we read in the other gospel stories, it's likely that there are many others who had their own sense of thinking that this woman shouldn't be bothering Jesus. So you see, the, the picture I end up with in my mind is that of a woman devotedly worshiping Jesus in her own way, a room filled with those disgusted by her presence and offended by her audacity, and Jesus calmly replying as he does again and again and again in the Gospels, I love her too. Yesterday, we were reminded that your worries, your needs, your pains are worthy of God's love. Today, we are reminded that so are you. Just remember, I am able to say that with no idea who you are. Because God's grace is that remarkable. God's invitation is that open. God's love is that powerful. I very well may have no idea who you are, but that doesn't change the fact that I can tell you without a modicum of doubt that God loves you too. Let's join in prayer together. God, whose, whose love extends in ways we never imagined and whose invitation reaches to each and every one of us, we praise you for the grace in which we are held. We rest in the promise of your mercy, God. Help us to see anew what it means to be loved by you. Help us to truly grasp the wonder that is our ability to say that no matter who we are, no matter where we have been, no matter what we have done, we are loved by you. And we are invited into the eternal wonder of residing in your everlasting care. For we pray it in his name.
Amen. As always, I pray you have a blessed day. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you here at noon again tomorrow.